Hi, this is Jelle from Growing Bonsai, and today I'm going to look at this maple. There's something wrong with it, and as every bonsai owner knows, when there's an illness in your tree, you better treat it, or you might have to toss the tree. Can I keep this tree, or do I have to toss it? Watch the video and find out. It's not the grower, it's not the store, it's not the substrate, it's me. This is a Japanese maple of the variety Katsura. Um, Katsura has very nice spring foliage. It's slightly yellow with a red edge. And as such, it looks almost orange. Isn't the foliage gorgeous though? Would really be a shame to lose this tree. The first sign that something was wrong with this tree was the fact that it wasn't really pushing. You see there's lots of leaves on the tree, but it's not extending. This branch now has started to die off. If you look at the branches, you can tell that this branch is dead and there's dead spots in other parts of the tree as well. However, I noticed in the middle of winter that something had been chewing here on the bark. So the white spots on the bark here is actually a branch without bark. That's where some rodent, probably a mouse, has been chewing that branch. That is why in spring I wasn't alert to any other problems that the tree might have. I knew that some rodents had been eating on the plant and I just put the tree outside and never thought about what else might be wrong. If you look at the trunk, what you can tell is there is black spots here in the bark. This normally is a very bad sign. It is a sign that the bark or actually the cambium below this bark is starting to die off. Um, for me, this is a sign for a fungal infection. The fungal infection that this tree could have normally is visible inside the branches as well. Um, the way it works is this is a fungal infection that goes into the branch and then blocks the veins and as such the veins turn black and if you then look at a cross section of the branch normally you'd see dead black veins so one way to diagnose whether this is actually indeed dying off because of a fungal infection is by cutting off the branch and taking a look on the inside on the area that was cut Interestingly enough, if we look at the inside of the branch, we see that the cross sections are actually completely healthy. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with the branch, yet we do notice that the leaves are dying off. So there is something wrong, but maybe it is not the feared fungal infection. So great news. It probably is not a fungal infection. Then what could be it? Um, it is still early spring, middle of spring. So one thing that could have happened is this tree has been outside sitting against my shed and we've had quite a bit of frost. Maybe there has been some frost damage on the tree. Um, one way to figure out whether it's frost damage or not is to take the tree out of the pot and look at the roots. This is not an ideal time to do this, but as I do not want to risk spreading an infection to my other trees, I think this is a good reason for now taking the tree out of the pot, having a look at the roots and as I'm on, uh, on it anyway, then I'll also put it in some substrate. What is clear straight away is that this soil is very, very wet. It's very organic. I got this plant last fall and it is still in the nursery container. I thought the soil would have been better and the roots look indeed very unhappy. They're brown, mushy. So in this case, indeed, the problem is the roots and not something else. Um, let's see whether we can still save this tree. You can tell the roots are all dead, rotting. Um, a very bad situation for this tree, to be honest. So this work really needed to be done. Otherwise, the tree would for sure have had a very hard time recovering, um, whereas now there is a slight chance that it will recover. So most of the soil is removed from the tree. Note that I'm not going to trim the roots all that much. Um, I'm, I've just clipped off a few of the very bad sections, but the rest of it I'll leave on. Um, and now it is pretty much time to get it potted up again. One thing that I do see online and on fora is that people blame the substrate for this. And actually, I don't have anybody or anything to blame but myself. 
Um, I'm the first one to advocate putting yield plants straight away in your preferred substrate. And I didn't do that. But that means that if you have a very organic substrate for your new tree, and normally you're in a more mineral-based substrate that is very well drained, you need to adjust your watering schedule. And I didn't do that for this tree. I just left it outside in the full rain over winter. And then once the spring came, I didn't pay attention and I just watered as per normal. And that is what has affected the tree. It's not the grower, it's not the store, it's not the substrate, it's me. I made the mistake of not adjusting my watering schedule to the substrate type that's now in the pot. And I think that is an important thing to realize that the substrate is hardly ever to blame. It is usually the grower that is to blame. Um, because it was so wet, roots have started to die and dead roots can start rotting. So that's maybe another misconception that people have when it comes to bonsai. Rotting roots are not a cause. Rotting roots are a result of poor care um, and poor circumstances for the plant to grow in. If the roots rot, they have died before. So fix the cause of death, that will fix the rotting. As I'm working the roots, um, I've moved to the shade. First thing to do is to make sure that the big holes in the pot are closed so I can fill it up with substrate. And I'll use some gitter that I got from the hardware store, which is usually used when you're plastering wool. It doesn't need to be all that exact. I'm just pushing it in into space, place so that the substrate doesn't fall through. Shake off the old substrate that's still left, gently positioning it and filling it up with substrate. Make sure you get all the substrate between all the roots. Um, one of the easiest ways to do that is using a chopstick, moving the roots side to side. And by moving the roots side to side, you create space and the substrate will fall between the roots. You may notice I'm not wiring the tree in. Um, I haven't removed all that many roots and the root ball is quite tall, so I have full confidence that this plant will not fall out of the pot once the substrate is in place. As said, it is early spring and uh, it is really not an ideal time to repot maples. This is an emergency repot and it is only done right now because I was concerned the tree would die if it stayed in the substrate um, because the roots were already partially dead. Another way to get substrate deep into the pot is by tapping the pot a few times. By now most of the roots should have substrate around them. Now the question is of course um, what to do with all the other branches. This one is wilting as well so I'm just going to clip it off. I'll leave a small stub. I'll reduce this one. So now the tree doesn't have a lot of foliage left. It is enough to power the roots. It is hopefully not too much for the roots to sustain. Um, this is always a difficult balance to find when repotting an ill tree. This tree will now go into the semi-shade. I will not expose it to full sun at midday for any longer than needed. And we'll see. Although I'm quite confident that this tree didn't have a fungal infection, I'm still not taking any chances. All the tools that were used are now being disinfected. For disinfecting, I'm just using a commercially available um, feed disinfectant spray, which kills 99% of bacteria and fungi.